Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Mark Todorovic and in this video we're talking about active transport. Now active transport is the movement of substances into or out of a cell against their concentration gradient. Now this is different to passive transport where substances moved into or out of cells down their concentration gradient, which means when they move down a concentration gradient they don't require any energy. But in active transport, when they go against their concentration gradient, what does that mean? It means they're going from an area where there's a low concentration of that substance to an area where there's a high concentration of that substance. This requires energy and hence termed active transport. And there's two main types that we wanna talk about today. There's primary active transport and secondary active transport. Okay, so what I wanna talk about first is the slide that I spoke about in the passive transport video. Remember I said to you, if you have a slide and you're at the top of the slide, let's say this is a high concentration area. If you want it to go from where it's high to where it's low, all you need to do is let go and nature takes its course and you slide down that slide from a high concentration to a low concentration and it doesn't cost you any energy. But if you are down here at the low concentration and you wanna to go to an area of high concentration, you need to climb that ladder. And when you are climbing that ladder, you are expending energy. And so that means to go from a low concentration to a high concentration, you require energy. Now, what is the energy substrate that we use in the human body? Well, the most important that you need to know is something called ATP. What does ATP stand for? It stands for adenosine triphosphate. Basically, tri meaning three, phosphate, saying that there's three phosphates. Now, in this ATP, there's stored energy. And what happens is if we split off one of these three phosphates, we release energy. So basically, you can go from ATP you can split off one of these phosphates and at the same time you give off energy and you are left with something called ADP, which is simply adenosine diphosphate. You go from tri-3 to di-2. And what we've done is released energy. So this is the process that we need to hijack when we're looking at active transport. So two things, active transport going from a low concentration to a high and we need ATP in this process. Now let's apply this process when we're looking at a cell. So if I were to draw up a cell of the body, very simple looking cell, remember the cells of your body have a phospholipid bilayer. So this is a membrane made up of phospholipids. Again, phosphates with lipids. So lipids are referring to fats. There are fatty acid tails. Now think about fats. Fats only like mixing with other fats. They don't like mixing with anything that has a charge associated with it. Keep that in your mind for later on. So here we have a cell. Now let's just say that you had a high concentration of a substance outside this cell and a low concentration of this substance inside the cell. Now, most cells, or all cells, are going to have channels embedded in their membrane, okay? Now, if this channel is specific for this particular substance or solute, what do you and it's opened up, what do you think is going to happen? The process of diffusion. All these solutes will move down their concentration gradient into the cell until they're evenly distributed. But, what if we want these substances or solutes inside the cell to go outside the cell? Well, this requires energy because it doesn't want to happen naturally. So what happens is this. These channels, which are now termed pumps because they're going to pump something against their concentration gradient, they will take these solutes. The solutes will usually bind into an area of that pump. ATP will come along, give that pump some energy in the form of releasing that phosphate, that pump will change its shape and open up and it will let this particular solute out of the cell against its concentration gradient. Now in this process, where a solute is going against its own concentration gradient, using ATP, this process is called primary active transport. Primary active transport is where a single solute is going against its own concentration gradient 
using ATP as its primary energy source, hence primary active transport. ATP is the primary energy source for the process. Now, sometimes, for example, this solute that wants to go outside can't use ATP as its energy substrate directly. So it needs to use some energy coming from elsewhere. How does it do it? Well, sometimes, for example, there's another solute. Let's say there's another solute inside the cell in high concentration. And this same solute is present outside the cell in low concentration. Well, we know that this solute, if it has a channel that's open, can diffuse out of the cell down its concentration gradient. There's actually energy stored in this process of going down this concentration gradient. Think about it. When you go down the slide, there's energy in that process, okay? Going down the concentration gradient. Now, what you can do in this process is this solute that wants to go against its concentration gradient can piggyback on this solute that's going down its concentration gradient. And so, as this solute is going down its concentration gradient through the channel, going down the slide, what happens is this solute piggybacks on this process and jumps out as well. Basically, it's like you going down your slide and taking your little brother or sister with you on your lap, okay? This is what we call secondary active transport. This is where a solute will move against its concentration gradient using the energy stored up from another solute or substance going down its concentration gradient. Now, the examples I've provided with you here are substances going out of the cell. This can happen with substances wanting to go into the cell as well. And when it comes to secondary active transport, they don't have to go in the same direction. This substance that's going down its concentration gradient could go out, while the substance or solute that's piggybacking is going in the opposite direction inside. This is called antiport, where they're going in opposite directions. In this scenario where they're going in the same direction, that's called symport. So what's the take home message here? The take home message is that active transport requires energy in the form of ATP or in the form of stored energy when a solute goes down its concentration gradient. If it's using its primary energy source from ATP, it's called primary active transport. And if it's using the energy source stored with a solute going down its concentration gradient, it's called secondary active transport. And in secondary active transport, the solutes can go in the same direction, that's called symport, or they can go in the opposite direction, that's called antiport. So remember this particular slide and see if we can apply these concepts to more difficult solutes. When I say difficult solutes, I mean solutes that may have a particular charge or characteristic associated with them, which we'll discuss in the next video. I'm Dr. Mike Todorovic and this is Active Transport.